Antarctica invites people who are ready to, to take a risk and to explore a little bit. And that can be anybody. I am Caribbean American, my dad is Dominican, and my mom is half Puerto Rican. So I have this hot, you know, island blood, yet I can't handle the heat and I love the cold. My name is Melissa. I am a PhD student with the Bird Polar and Climate Research Center, and I study the 2% of Antarctica that is ice-free. Antarctica has a large mountain chain known as the Transantarctic Mountains that traverse the continent, and these mountains are tall and they actually poke above the ice sheet. So these exposed soils have life. They're small organisms, usually not visible with the naked eye. And I am with a team of ecologists studying how these organisms have survived in Antarctica, despite these soils being really dry, super salty, and not really a good place for life. And I think that it's a really important question in understanding how organisms, especially simpler organisms, survive climate change. The tool that I am going to be talking about is interdisciplinary collaboration. So that's scientists coming together from different fields, different disciplines like biology and chemistry, and sharing resources, but also expertise. So Antarctica, it's like a lab experiment that you can produce in the actual environment outside. What I mean by that is the ecosystems that we find in Antarctica are simple. So the food chains and the interactions between organisms are generally simple as well. So because now we have this simplified ecosystem, we can start to understand how those ecosystems are influenced by the environment, following large-scale changes in climate, such as glacial advance and retreat. The team that we have is highly interdisciplinary. So when we're out in the field and we're sampling, you might see a spot and say, oh, that would be really helpful to learn how salts have fallen from the atmosphere and been deposited on the surface of the soil. But then a biologist might look at that soil and say, oh, I think we should actually collect a second one right next to it because this one looks like it was shielded by this rock. And maybe that might be a suitable habitat for this organism. And then the microbiologist might come in and say, yeah, and like maybe we should think about collecting some samples in this type of environment because it looks like there might have been some water there recently. And what's cool about that as a geochemist is it really adds to the variability of the samples that I end up collecting. And I think that that's really cool to be able to pull all those different things together because normally these aren't conversations that would happen in our individual fields. And I think that that is honestly a, a greater nod to diversity in general. You can have, you know, two people look at the same thing and their interpretation is different, but both of those interpretations are valuable 